the Thoughty OT podcast. For me, like going through that process myself, it was also about like separating out um, actions from intention as well. Yes. Like, just thinking about my experience in in times where I perhaps not haven't behaved the best way or communicated the best way, you know, I was like, okay, well, I was intending this, but it came across as this. And like just just being aware of the fact that fact was very helpful with like processing things. And I feel like a lot of autistic people, we we go through the school system, we go through the workplace, we go through society with this very heavy negative bias of people. You know, you, you see a lot of people within the autistic community who have a very, very negative regard for neurotypical individuals, which is founded like it makes sense. Um, but we do develop a lot of self-defensive mechanisms. We learn from other people how to communicate with them to keep ourselves safe. Um, we have very negative views of people, which help us not get too excited or expect too much out of interactions. You know, they're all very protective things, but they they also hold us back from really connecting with people, which, you know, yes. going through understanding my past was almost like, mandatory for me like being able to connect with other people in adulthood yeah i think one of the things that um w w with non-autistic realities what helped me understand you know rather than being generalist about mm. this is that you know there is more than there is more than one way to be non-autistic just like there is more than one way sure. to be autistic and that actually opens up a whole potential idea that actually everyone is an individual totally. everyone is going through their own stuff everyone is in in different environments which will tend it's a mess. to the, it's a, a bit of a mess yeah it's a mess. <laughs> yeah it's uh, and everyone's going through uh, because of their environments, different things. So we, I could talk to someone who's non-autistic and they could relate to a part of my autism, which is fine. That, that's perfectly um, reasonable. And it certainly, it can happen. I remember speaking to an ex-staff member who, who wasn't on the spectrum, but she, she was face blind like me. Hmm. And we just had this nice chat about how her face blindness had an impact on her and yeah, um, certain like the indirect communication like yeah. yes and it was quite interesting and i just felt okay but that just shows to me and Do donna was very much of the same ilk that if we are going to talk about non autistics let's not create further burn bridges yeah, we don't we uh, don't want to like because they they are the key to us getting what we need, like they are the majority. Like we need them. <laughs> I I suppose yeah, you could look at it like that. Indeed, um, it, it it seems that I I, I suppose I'm looking at it from a, an egalitarian point of view, where you you have lots oh, yeah. of yeah. of separation and. Some separation mm. of things is very man-made. So, you know, yeah. um, these these separations of peoples, these separations of um, race. That's, there's only really one race, mm. as Jane Elliott says. She's an anti-racism um, teacher and educator. And it's human race. Mm. We've had it drummed into us that there's four races and there, there, you know, it, there isn't. Yeah. There's just yeah. one race. And I think what, what we have to be very careful with, with labels, non-autistic uh, description if you want to describe someone as non-autistic don't make it um don't make it i'm trying to find the word if Inherently you start negative. giving it right. negative connotations like them and us all yes. the time you re run the risk of some on it non-autistic people being very worried about what they can and can't say and mm. because I've been in the advocacy, that's a common thing. Yeah, and because I've been in the advocacy movement for thirteen years, I've seen very militant autistic people mm. in mm. in a very privileged position, such as advocacy or um, mm. uh, or, or the, which is fine. I can understand, like you, why they probably got to the point where they have 
mental health wise but if you start being rude and i mean generally genuinely rude to people putting people down you then like... create this inability to kind of um uh, debate disagree hmm. offer a different perspective learn from someone's experience um and that's words can get in the way as much as they can matter so you can have words that people don't like like high and low functioning etc severe and mild and things like this but equally i can have a conversation with someone who uses those words and yes. not get reactive because it's their 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 choice to use those words i know people don't like them and they may have a very good reason for using them which i will try and understand um, so what I am all for is is even within the community, um, and this is probably why it it goes back to what you're saying about how uh, I've I've aided my own self esteem is is to become a bit more autonomous, to become a bit more self directing, to become um, not to the point of denying other people's reality. So that, so in other words, what I'm saying is even through the lens of maybe disagreement and not, not mm. liking certain words, we can still have a dialogue potentially. I'm willing to. Yeah. Um, the well, only it, rule I have it, is don't be rude. And I mean, genuinely rude. Um, yeah. and that is it. If you can, if we can just, that's the only rule. You can be firm with me. You can certainly be be blunt if you if you feel you need to, or if that is your style of communication. I don't mind that. Uh, yeah, let's learn from other people. Even people we don't agree with, we can learn from. Even people where we don't fully understand their reality, we can still learn from. I've met a lot of autistic people who I don't particularly like. Yes, so have I. I've met a lot of <laughs> neurozypicals that I don't particularly like. Um, yeah, sure, there is. There does tend to be that miscommunication barrier, which can put a put a some, somewhat of a barrier to connecting with neurotypical individuals. But you know, my mom's neurotypical. Um, I've dated neurotypical individuals. I have friends who are neurotypical. Mm. You know, um, it's it's very much. You know, personality is definitely like a really big factor in that. And I've had yeah. a lot of people who have, you know, whenever I've been talking about, you know, dating and, and trying to give some resources for neurotypicals to understand us a bit better, to get on with us better. Um, there's been some autistic people who've been like, oh, no, we just need to find another autistic person or like, you know, it's not it's not a good mix for us to be with a neurotypical person. It's like it there are some challenges to it, but there are also challenges to autistic autistic relationships. And it's yes. not as black and white as, you know, people would think. Um, so yeah. I, I really like that, that idea. And I, I can imagine that, you know, in, in, in your case, kind of processing information from the past in that way is being very helpful for you. Um, it also has been, you know, very, very helpful for me as well, like in terms of, understanding myself, feeling a bit better about myself, understanding people, forgiveness, you know, all of that thing is very, very important. For, forgiveness um, isn't, forgiveness is powerful because it's not expecting them to say, I'm sorry. I think that's where yeah. we get, we, we, it's, it's about you. It, it's a personal um, thing. It's a personal internal thing. It's not literally them coming up to you and, and saying, oh, anger is know. not fun. It, it, it affects no. you being angry affects you. <laughs> yes yeah i i've i've met um people who are in that sphere still where if i bring up school mm. it's too triggering or sure. they're not they're in the weeds of the metaphorical weeds of um trying to get get the weeds out so they're within yeah. the weeds of the garden and they, they 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 may not have the tools to get rid of them yet or they just simply aren't there yet emotionally to actually um actually deal with it and that's not me mm. being judgmental it, i was there you know if yeah. i go back 10 13 years I was, oh, totally yeah, yeah. Like, very great I, victim mindset for a lot of my my time on this earth. <laughs> yeah, victimhood's an interesting one, isn't it? I what why I don't know if it's similar for you. 
But the way I've disem- felt that is I was victimized, but I yeah. wasn't. I choose not to be a victim. So mm. I was victimized, but I don't filter that into my identity. And that was a True. real, I, I don't think I ever felt like one really, I felt upset about the world, but I never felt the world was completely giving me a hard time. I would I have did. moments <laughs> of thinking that, but it wouldn't be like my whole life, but like it wouldn't go on for days or weeks, but mm. I would have moments of, of, of self-pity and I think there are healthy amounts of self-pity I do believe you, you it's have empathy as well if, if you look yes. at it a different way it's, you know, slightly yeah. better way and it's a diff- it's a slightly different mindset because you're actually acknowledging the pain rather than um you know completely developing mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. um but yeah but luckily the counselor I've been with recently has been very good at explaining things in a way that's um I suppose quite tangible and understandable. But yes, um well it sounds to me like you've come to a similar place in your life where you're 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 building up rather than being stagnant, which is a horrible mm. place to be. Um yeah. You're pulled back by your your past and your, yes. your past experiences. It's it's not a good place to be in. 